Hello, friends. Both stamping and non-stamping. I know some of you watch that aren't stampers. It's 11 o'clock. I'm Nicole Steele. I'm the owner, designer, and creator of The Joyful Stamper. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I go live every Thursday at 11 o'clock Eastern Time. And if you're joining me live, thank you. I am so happy that you are taking time to join me. If you're watching the replay, thank you. That's always available. And feel free to leave comments whether you're watching live or the replay because I do get notification of it and if there's questions and stuff, I, I do respond to it. So I know it's a busy time of year, so watching things as they actually go live while it's really fun and I love, love interacting with everybody, I understand it's not always possible. But I am super excited about what I have to share with you guys today. So I needed a stack of gift card holders. And so I was scouting around the internet for ideas and I saw these present shaped ones. And I thought these are so easy to make. You can put on a Christmas movie and whip up a stack of them and I need a stack of them. So we're going to make two projects today. This is the first one and then I have a catalog case for the second project. So this one, it slides up like this. So I have the inside stamped and this is where your gift card holder goes. It's in this little flap here. So isn't that adorable? I love it. And it's not hard at all. And then it just slides back in here just like that. And what I like about this project is you can use a ton of different pattern papers. I'm using Tis This Season and it was avail. Actually, it's still showing as available, but it's actually not available. And I didn't know that. I just found that out two seconds ago. So it must have just sold out. But the good news is that Stampin' Up! has so many other Christmas papers. And honestly, at this point, if you're going to order the Christmas paper, it isn't going to get here in time for Christmas. So you would have to use it for next year's holidays. So you can use what you have on hand. Really, the point of this is to give you a really good idea for last minute, easy gift ideas. Okay. And the sentiment that I'm using is coming from this stamp set for Unto Us, and it is retiring. All the supplies I'm using today you can find in my store, shopwithnicole.stampinup.net. What I like about this set is all the sentiments. We Christmas sentiments are something I really like to put on both the inside and outside of my card, so I snatch up any Christmas sets that are mostly sentiments, and I like these ones especially because... As a Christian, this is what Christmas means to me. This says it all, and I like to show that on my projects. So, um, while I'm pulling my supplies out, if you're here live, just shout out, you know, where you're from, what's the weather like. We had a big snowstorm last night, and I'm in my element. I went running in it this morning, and it was so much fun. I'm crazy. I know my daughter just left to go meet her friend. They're going for a run in the snow too. So I'm not the only one. Um, let me grab my pieces of paper here. Okay, so I'm using cherry cobbler. My color scheme is cherry cobbler and this particular green is shaded spruce. I've got some whisper white there. Um, make sure I've got all my other pieces here. My basket's kind of filled over here. And one more piece to grab. Okay, we're going to start with some scoring. And when I'm done here, I'm going to type up all the measurements to this project in the description so that you'll have it to create when you sit down to stamp. So I'm pulling out my scoreboard here, uh, my bone folder. So this first piece measures six inches by five and a half inches. And I'm putting the long side, the six inch side across the top of my scoreboard and I'm gonna score it at three inches. So right down the middle, just like that. Then I'm gonna turn it so that the shorter side is now along the top. And I'm gonna score a half inch in from the left side and a half inch in from the right side. Okay, so that's gonna be the bottom of our box or our gift card holder. Now I'm going to bring in a piece that is 
five and a half inches by three inches. And this is going to be the lid. So we are gonna score on the long side. I have the five and a half inch side, the longer side going across the top. We're gonna score at a quarter inch in from each side. Then I'm going to turn it so that the shorter or three inch side is along the top and we're gonna score it at one and a half inches, which would be right in the middle. So that was our lid. And now we want the inside piece, which is going to hold our message and our gift card. And this inside piece is four and three quarters of an inch by four inches. And we're gonna score at the long side. So make sure the four and three quarter inch side is at the top. We're gonna score at one inches. That's gonna create the little flap that holds our gift card and you'll see it all come together here in a minute okay so we're gonna pull all these out you're going to need some tear and tape to do this to hold this all together and you'll need your bone folder because we are gonna start creasing everything okay and for this one let's take our scissors and what you're going to do is we're going to cut on these vertical score lines right here just up onto that middle one there. These are gonna create some flaps to help us create it. So I've cut up to the middle there and now I'm gonna cut this part at an angle and I'll do this on the other side. So if you're tired of Christmas already, or I should say tired of making Christmas projects already, the January paper pumpkin kit was announced. I have all the details on my blog, thejoyfulstamper.com, and it's a Valentine themed kit. So it's going to make eight Valentine's Day cards, and they're having a special add on kit that you can get for eight dollars that makes treat boxes. I think there's 20 of them. So if you have kids that are having Valentine's Day class parties, or you know, you can use those if you like passing things out to your neighbors. Um, so yeah. Valentine's already we're thinking ahead now this is the lid we're gonna cut our lid the exact same way we just cut the bottom so we're cutting up on the vertical score line just to that middle one and we'll cut at an angle to create a little flap and we'll do that both on the left and the right sides I know people were looking at me like I was nuts this morning when I went running it was about seven o'clock in the morning so people were going to work <laughs> And I'll tell you what, as a runner, it's actually better if people don't shovel their sidewalks. Because when they do, it turns slushy and slippery, and it's so much easier to run through the snow, believe it or not. And it's just, it's fun. It's a really, really good workout. Okay, so I'm going to apply tear and tape on these two tabs here. And what I just got in my order, I don't know what took me so long to get one of these, a take your pick tool. I have been using my old piercer for years and I bought this mostly because um, I bought some ice cream sprinkles which I'll show you in a little bit and so I wanted this putty tip to easily pick them up. Oh my goodness. That putty tip is amazing. If you're working with sequins, you know little things like that, little embellishments, this does the trick. It just it sticks right to them. I don't know why I waited so long to get one and they're only 10 bucks <laughs> and they come with a little spatula and a piercer and two putties um, refills so it'll last you a super long time okay let's now I should have creased all this and folded it before I put the tear and tape on because I would have gotten a little bit more of an even edge but this is it the little still fit on this and that's what's most important okay so we got that now this is the lid these tabs are too skinny to put tear and tape on so we're actually going to use liquid glue and you'll want to have a couple stamping blocks nearby because we're gonna set the blocks on top of this just so we can get or give the glue time to really adhere and do its job Okay, so while I'm waiting for that, this is the bottom. We are going to take a piece of designer series paper. This one is four and three eighths of an inch by two and seven eighths. And it's 
the Tis the Season 6x6 six six inch designer series paper stack. And as I said, minutes before coming here live, it was showing as available. But if you actually, it must have just sold out though, because if you actually try to punch the number in my store, it's not there anymore. But there's plenty of other paper, and I'm sure you guys have tons of pattern paper of your own to, um, to use. Okay, so Facebook is not showing me any comments, and this happened last week too, and when I got off the live, there was actually quite a few comments and people watching. So if you're commenting, I cannot see it. And I'm so sorry about that. So we're gluing that to the bottom of our box. This should be dry now. This is our lid, and I'm. this is a little bit longer than um, this front piece for some reason, so I'm going to just flip it over and make sure that this is the nicer side, the prettier side is facing the front of this. Are you guys ready for Christmas? I did not shop as much this year. I am going out today, though, to get a few more things. I mean, my girls are older. What they want is more expensive. They don't want as many things. So, um, so it's easy. It's easy to shop for them. This particular piece of designer series paper was uh, one and three eighths of an inch by four and seven eighths of an inch. And now I have a one inch wide strip by four and a half inches long. And this is going to get glued. I'm going to glue it down the middle of my present here. Okay, first I'll show you. This is the lid and it's going to fit right into here. And we have some more pieces to add. So that's how it's gonna to come together. But I'm taking them apart for now and I'm making sure that the lid is centered over this because I'm going to glue this strip down the middle here. Now first what I'm going to do is just put some liquid glue on just the top part. And I'll put my strip down and then I will take my paper snips Make sure that's even. Flip it over and cut this along that edge. Oh, that moved a little bit for me while I had that down there. So let me trim it off a little bit more. The liquid glue is great for giving you wiggle room, but I didn't want it to move in this case. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and apply some more glue on the bottom half and this will allow me to get this lined up straight. All right, my paper's cut a little crooked. Fortunately, that will get covered by the lid. And honestly, I never make anything that looks perfect anyway, so I'm just gonna go with it. All right, so this is the inside where the gift card holder is gonna go. Now, you don't have, this next part is optional, but I took a piece of Whisper White cardstock, and it's two inches by three and three quarters of an inch, and I'm going to stamp a greeting on it. And I'm going to use Christmas Begins with Christ from the Four Unto Us set, and I'm going to use a Cherry Cobbler ink pad to do that. My freshly inked Cherry Cobbler ink pad. Oh, I love that rich red. Love it. It's a, such a great color for vintage Christmas cards. And I'm not going to glue this all the way down to the bottom here because you won't be able to see the message. I'm doing it just above the fold like this. And if you wanted to, actually, you could add another strip of designer series paper to this part right here. I'm just thinking of that now, so I don't have one cut. Now you have to pull out your tear and tape again. Flip this over. This is the front where the gift card holders, where the gift card's going to go like this. We want to apply in tear and tape along the top back of it. Right along that edge. So that crazy mocha gift card I just showed you, I won that from my library. They have a summer reading program for adults and you enter the books that you've read every week and they draw your name to get gift cards for local establishments in Swickley and I won that crazy mocha gift card. So I've been drinking their peppermint hot chocolate every time I go into town and it's so fun. I love my library. I love it. It's one of my favorite places to be. 
So it's just going to get inserted into this lid. And you want to push it up all the way to the top of the lid because you want it glued up to the inside all the way up to the top like that. So you want to center it and push it all the way up to the top and adhere it down. So fun fact, when I was in high school, I did not go to high school football games. Our football games were on Saturday afternoons back then because we didn't have a stadium with lights. Instead, while all my friends were at the football game, I would go to the library and I would read. And to this day, I probably still would choose that. So then the gift card goes in there and you slide this into the bottom and then your lid goes on the top. Now we're not done because we're going to decorate this lid. Now mine's not pushed all the way down. I do have it just a little bit up like that and just ex ignore that wonky cutting right there. Okay, so what I did ahead of time is I stamped another sentiment from that For Unto Us set, um, For Unto Us A Child Is Born. And here's the thing, I did this on Very Vanilla, and to die cut that, I used these, this is a different die set, but I used these ornate frame dies here. These were released, not this past fall, but the fall before, and you can use these with so many different images and sentiments, and so I used this one right here. But there's a little tag one here too. Do you see that? So if you had a small enough sentiment, you could use that and tie some twine through that little hole and tie it around the ribbon that I'm going to put on there. So lots and lots of options. This is just going to get glued to my lid. So I painted my nails red last night and look, it scraped onto the paper. <laughs> so I've got some red streaks on there. <laughs> So this gift card holder, this particular one's going to have to go to somebody that doesn't pay quite so close attention to detail, right? All right, now I am pulling out some ribbon. This is actually Emerald Envy. It's a retired color, but it is the only green ribbon that I have in my collection, believe it or not. But here's some other options for you guys. If you have any of this metallic edged ribbon, whether in silver or gold, you can use this, or you can use this and take um, a Stampin' Blends marker that coordinates with your project. So this is a shaded spruce, and you could color your ribbon to match your project. I only have the silver edged ribbon, not the gold, and I don't, I don't really want silver with this. I'd rather have gold, so that's why I'm not going to use this. So I pulled out the only other green I have in my stash, and it is this Emerald Envy. So but we have lots and lots of choices. The main point is I wanted to show you how to make this gift card holder. And I will use the glue dot to put this on. Uh, hi, Lissa. Okay, so I can see comments, good. Because last week I could not. And I felt like a very rude host, ignoring her guests. All right, so that is that I will bring out the other two don't forget I have a third or uh, second project so don't leave yet so there we go that's without the gift card this one has the gift cards in it you can easily make a stack of these easy peasy right do it assembly line and that way if you have to give somebody a last minute gift you've got it ready to go so I'm going to be making a lot more of these, probably tonight because I'm watching the Nutcracker. Pittsburgh Ballet Theater canceled our tickets, but they're going to show it fireside on TV tonight. So my daughter and I, my youngest, who's a dancer, we're going to watch it. And I'm so excited. So my second project, this is coming, this is a bundle that's coming up in the new mini catalog. I'm going to case, um, or I'm going to make a card that I saw in here. I can't open the catalog yet and show you the card, but trust me, there's lots of gorgeous samples in here. In fact, the stamping class that I had yesterday, all of our projects came from the catalog. So never be afraid to make the samples that are in the catalog. That's what they're there for. And if you're new to stamping, it's a great way to learn how to stamp. So don't be afraid to do that. It also helps too if you don't have a lot of time to stamp. 
because then you don't have to sit there and think of your own projects. So I've been having a lot of fun with the paper that comes in this sweet ice cream suite. I'll show you some of it. So there's this sheet here, and I've used a lot of it. Thanks, Bonnie. Some ice cream patterns. There's some stripes, popsicles on the back. You can tell I've used quite a bit of this already. I love this pattern here. Love it. So sweet. And I love this watercolor look. And I'm going to show you a neat trick to do with these watercolor patterns. A little shortcut. Look how fun that is. Love, love, love those purples. Some more watercolor. Love these polka dots. So fun. There's some sprinkles. Some ice cream cones. Lots of fun patterns to play with. Would be fun to use in the middle of January. And the other things that are part of this suite are this Blackberry Bliss Sheer Ribbon. I don't know if you can see it. And these cute ice cream sprinkles. So this is what I was telling you. I was really impressed with what the Take Your Pick tool could do. Now, I accidentally twisted my cap way too much, so a lot more putty than I needed came out. But you take it, and if I want one sprinkle, look at that. Look how easy that is. And then you can just put it right on your project. I, again, why did I wait so long to get one of these? <laughs> Can you imagine trying to pick these up with tweezers or with your fingers? That would be impossible. So if you don't have a take your pick tool, get one. All right, this ribbon though, so pretty. You can see I've already used quite a bit. I've been using this bundle a lot, a lot, a lot. All right, so I got some really fun things to show you for this card. We are going to use blending brushes. And, okay, here's a confession. These blending brushes... They're makeup brushes, okay? So I went out and bought some, and two days later, my catalog arrived, and lo and behold, Stampin' Up! has a set of blending brushes in there. And not only did they have the blending brushes in there, they were much, much less expensive than what I bought mine for. <sighs> Bad timing on my part, right? <laughs> so... I don't have the Stampin' Up! blending brushes, but they the Stampin' Up! ones are much less expensive than the ones I, I bought. And from what I've heard other demonstrators say, they work fabulous. And they are super fun. They are fun. So I will show you the technique that you can do with them. We're going to use our punch. We're going to have fun with this sweet ice cream set today. Okay. Um, i got to open my catalog off camera here so that I can see... The card that I'm casing because I actually haven't made it yet all right so I'm flying by the seat of my pants here so this is a pull party piece of cardstock five and a half inches by eight and a half inches and it's scored down the middle at four and a quarter okay so that's a pool party card base and I have cut let me see my measurements here I believe this is five inches by a three and three quarter inch piece of designer series paper. And it's um, this from the sweet ice cream, from the ice cream, ice cream corner suite. Now I cut mine with the stitched rectangle dies. You don't have to, you can just cut it, you know, with your paper trimmer, however you like. Now let me pull out a piece of scratch paper here for this technique. I am going to pull out um, let's use Pool Party. I think this is the color they used in the catalog. A Pool Party ink pad. And I want to create this ombre effect. So I'm going to take one of these blending brushes and I'm going to brush it along my ink pad. So pick up some, a lot of color here. Now it might be Bermuda Bay that they used. So let's just try this first. Get some color on there. And I'm going to start swirling it onto my paper. Get some more ink here. I'll show you how to re-ink a pad. I've been stamping a lot these past couple weeks. So some of my ink pads are a little bit dry. And then I take a plastic spoon and I smooth it out to really push that ink into 
the ink pad. Okay, and then I just wipe the spoon off and have it ready for my next one. Okay. There we go. And you can add layers of color with these blending brushes. So you can go heavier at the top and then we'll get lighter as we go down to the bottom. And I find it helpful to start off slightly off the edge of my paper and then work my way down. So the color gets darker at the top and lighter at the bottom. So it's a pretty, pretty ombre effect, don't you think? So fun. We're gonna use that technique again in our sentiments. So I'm gonna keep those nearby. And I will glue this to my card front. And if you want to keep going, sometimes you'll have residual color left on your brush. And so you can just empty it all out onto there. Glue this to our card front. I like the watercolor look of the images on this paper. And the hand-drawn look to these stripes. Okay, and now I have another rectangle. This one is Whisper White, and it's two and three eighths of an inch by three and five eighths. And again, I used, if I got ink on it, a stitched rectangle die, but you can just cut your paper to that, to that size if you want. Okay, I am going to glue this on to my card base right over here. Okay, then let's pull out this set. Um, I'm gonna use Treat Yourself. Get a block here. And I'm going to use Black Blackberry Fliss. Trouble seeing that. And I'm going to stamp it right down in the corner there. Now, I probably should have stamped this before I glued it down. That way, if I made a mistake, I could just flip the paper over but I'm gonna be bold and daring and just go for it. And that turned out good, fortunately. We're gonna doctor this sentiment up a little bit more, so not done with that yet. But what I'm gonna do is you can go ahead and stamp these images. This punch will work with this ice cream scoop and with this cone right here but I'm going to do a shortcut. So this is the watercolor portions of this pattern paper. So those are really super fun patterns there. But what I'm going to do is punch the ice cream scoop from these watercolor images right here. I'm going to punch one from each of these pieces of paper. one do I want? I like this one right here. Okay. Then I'm going to grab another pattern. This one right here. And I'm going to punch the cone from that. Now with these builder punches where you punch out multiple images with one punch, I find that, I mean, if you just like stamp willy nilly, you could end up wasting a lot of paper with, you know, punching it out. But if you just take a minute and use some scrap paper and play with this punch, you will get a feel for the best way to stamp your images so as to conserve the most paper possible. So like for instance, when if I were to stamp this ice cream scoop, I would actually stamp it going vertically on a piece of paper so that I could go through like this, punch, and just move my way up the paper. And that way, this portion is going to punch out the already punched out image right there. So I'm not wasting anything, right? You know, just moving your way up. Then if you stamp this um, cone, you'll want to stamp it this way. 
and then you can just go down your paper and punch it out like this and this part will be punching out the cone that you've already punched out so again you're not wasting paper so just take a minute with these builder punches play with them with some scrap paper and you'll get a feel for the best way and position to punch everything out so as to maximize your paper use so just a little tip because we have quite a few builder punches I know I have the umbrella builder punch um, I think is there still an out builder punch or did that get retired I can't remember I can't remember but I know we've had a lot over the years and they're very fun to play with okay so I'm gonna use dimensionals to give my ice cream cones some lift and let's see how we can best position these on here um, let's put the cone like that put this one like this and put one like this actually let's let's give this these two some more fun let me pull out there's some sprinkles let's add some sprinkles to our ice cream do you guys get sprinkles on your ice cream I love a good sundae the more toppings the better okay I'm going to add let's see I will add some Bermuda Bay to this one Okay. And then for this one, I think I'll add some terracotta tile because that's one of the colors that is in this suite. And let me clean my stamp off here. Terracotta tile is one of the colors that is retiring. It's one of our ink colors and it's retiring in May. So when celebration starts on January 5th, that would be a really good time to stock up on all the um, the five retiring in color products so you can get your reinkers you can get your cardstock ribbon whatever it is you want that's a really good time because it's still in stock and there's not a mad rush yet and you will get free celebration benefits for it so really smart thing to do okay now this ice cream I don't like the way it's flipping up so I'm going to go ahead and add some glue dots just to hold it down okay and I think that one looks good all right now let's do a little bit extra for our sentiment here or as my teenage daughters would say let's make it bougie do you guys hear your kids or your grandkids say that bougie it's like the new term now I think it means something is like extra fancy Okay, now I'm going to stamp this on Whisper White and I'm going to use Versamark and really I just want the Yourself. Okay, and then I'm going to add some white embossing powder to this. Now my stamp wasn't 100% clean, but that's okay. going to bring back out those blending brushes and try to do an ombre effect on this sentiment here. So getting my heat gun warmed up here to melt this powder. Isn't that a fun look? Okay, the powder is melted bring back my scratch paper and I'm gonna use the smaller brush this time make sure it's clean yep no ink on it okay let's bring back out the pool party and let's add some color we're gonna start at the top here and that embossing will resist the ink do you see that so it's gonna make it pop And I'm going to try and go darker on the top of this and lighter on the bottom. Okay. Ooh, so pretty. 
And now let's take our paper snips and I'm going to fussy cut out just that word yourself. And I'm going to follow along just outside the words, the letters, because I want that ink to show, that ink blending to show, so I don't want to cut right up against the letters. There are so many great ideas you can get from these catalogs. So you, if, if feeling like you have to be 100% original is keeping you from stamping, like just chuck that idea to the curb. Throw that idea out, grab your catalog, go through it. I mean, you can make everything, everything you make can come from the catalog. It, there's no shame in uh, taking somebody else's idea and using it to create something for yourself. I mean, that's why people share. Now let's use some mini Stampin' Dimensionals to put this on here. I think this is one of the best adhesive Stampin' Up! ever, ever came out with, were these mini Dimensionals. I spent so much time cutting the regular sized ones in half to try to get them to fit on my tinier pieces. So this has been a time saver to have these. And I'm going to put this right over top of that yourself that I already stamped. There we go. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Now, if you wanted to, I can't find my sprinkles. I was get there they are. It would be kind of fun, I think, to maybe add a few sprinkles to this card. I don't know. What do you think? Or would it be too over the top? I'm not really sure. Like, you know, you could just, I'm, I'm going to do it. Why not? I have them out. So I think the easiest way to do this is to take your fine tip glue. If I can get the cap open. Sometimes it glues itself shut. <laughs> Holy cow. We were using this yesterday in class. And I can't get it open. Oh my word, maybe I'm gonna have to skip the sprinkles. Okay, well, I wanted to use this. We're gonna go with backup number two. We're gonna use this and just kind of hope it doesn't come out in a big glob. Okay, I'm gonna put some right there. So I find it easiest to put the glue down first and then put my sprinkles on. Do you see how easy this is? I want to get a purple one. And let's get one of these terracotta tile ones. Oh my gosh, such fun colors. Come on, stick to there. There we go. And I think I'll add another purple one to the bottom there. There we go. All right, let me bring out my two projects. So that's what we made today. I hope you guys like them. I hope if you give them a try yourself, which I know you can't get the products for this yet, this will be available January 5th. And if you need a catalog, the celebration brochure or the mini catalog, just let me know. Send me a message through Facebook. You can email me. Um, Nicole at thejoyfulstamper.com or I have a catalog request request form on my blog at thejoyfulstamper.com. I will send the packages out. I send them out free of charge. All I ask is that you um, plan to order from me if you are going to request a catalog package. So this will be available. These products are available January 5th. And of course, the holiday catalog is still going on. There's retiring stuff on sale through January 4th. So this is the gift card holder. So, okay guys, so next Thursday is Christmas Eve. As of now, yeah, yeah, Bonnie, you love it. I'm glad you love it. Yeah, I don't know why it took me so long to get it, right? Oh, it makes picking up those little embellishments so much less frustrating. But, um, so next Thursday is Christmas Eve. I would like to go, still go live. I mean, I, I know people are doing stuff. We're going to church later that night, but... I'm not cooking dinner. We were supposed to go to a restaurant. That got canceled because our governor shut the restaurants down. 
but I know a caterer, so um, he's bringing in food for us, for our family for dinner, so I don't have to cook. So I've got time to go live. So I don't know, I'm thinking though, no Christmas projects. I might show a little bit more from the mini catalog because, oh my gosh, let me show you this. I'll show you what else I got from the catalog. Okay, so I was thinking ahead to, um, to Valentine's Day. So I bought some of this Blushing Bride Glimmer Ribbon. Isn't that pretty? It's so elegant, I love it. Now I didn't get the um, Valentine's Day sets that are in there. I'm actually going to use the Valentine's set Heartfelt from last year's catalog with the punch because it's just, I, I really like it. So I'm gonna keep using it. But this, I had to get this ribbon. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Then I got these black matte dots. I like that they're matte because it adds to the elegance of the Valentine's Day projects. So those are pretty. And then I got this paper and oh my goodness, if you guys, if you like to color, this paper is amazing. And it's, the color scheme is black and white. So let me pull this out. Look at that. You can leave it as it is and it'll look pretty. I mean, look at this together. That's stunning, right? But you can also color this with your blends if you wanted to. Let me get these brushes out of the way. And look at that. This made my husband's eyes go wonky. <laughs> and then you have this. So imagine coloring these. You know what I think? I think it'd be really fun to do a live, like a class, showing you how to use your blends to color these flowers. Would that be something anyone would be interested in? I know it can be relaxing to watch people color, so I don't know. Let me know. And then you can cut these out and make car. Oh my gosh, so many ideas. Then there's this pattern. This kind of reminds me of that that Zentangle art people do. This one, love, and then stripes. I love stripes. And here's the cool thing about this one. I don't know if you can see it, but the color in between that black and between those white stripes, it has this like weathered look to it. I love it, love it. Then you've got this sheet you can color, some more polka dots on the back. And how fun would it be to use those blending brushes to add some ombre effect shades to this, you know, like maybe in Blushing Bride or Poppy Parade and just, yeah, lots of options there. And then there's this pattern, like that one. I like this one too. This one has that weathered look with the black. Also, some more flowers to color and these stripes. So those are the patterns. Um, that paper is called True Love. True Love Designer Series paper. So I got that. And then I got the ice cream corner suite in January. Um, I'm placing a really big order and I'm going to get everything on my list from the catalog. And I'm probably going to get every single celebration item in the brochure too. So I'm a little excited. Okay, I'm really done now for the morning. <laughs> so thanks for spending, um, what is it, 40 minutes, 45 minutes with me making these projects. If you need anything, let me know. Otherwise, guys, have a really Merry Christmas, and I will see you next Thursday probably. Bye.